That's one of the better ones I've hit in a while. Same guy. <laughs> I'm glad because it's. Uh, sure, yeah, you want. <laughs> I'm glad too. I just, like you kept hitting like that first one. I'm, I'm gonna get in the cart. <laughs> like going to the doctor and not being sick. That's right. Your car doesn't make that funny noise when you go to the mechanic. Yeah, there you go. Three different results. I mean, ran. I mean, yeah. drastically three different shots. Not, no, not even close to being the same. I mean that in a tournament. That's in someone's barbecue. You know what I mean? No, you can't. <laughs> You wouldn't be able to finish the round. You'd be just a, a nervous wreck. I didn't see that one. Starting way right and slicing. Okay. Starting right and slicing. First, I want to try not to get uh, too sharp going. I want to try to lengthen this line a little bit. Try to have more extension. You're just going to hit how much. You may not go past the yellow pole. Try to just kind of tap some balls and see if you can't have just some control of the face and feel it in your hands at very slow speeds. Just some little tap drills. See if you can't tap the ball in a straight line. Not, not a full back swing, just a little. Just try to punch it out there. Now these next few, I want you to, instead of doing just with the hands, try to incorporate the belt buckle, pushing with it. That's it. That's the one I want you. That was the best of the group as far as this drill is concerned. That was the best execution of the drill. kind of pay attention to what you're feeling, particularly the connectedness of the club and the hip, hip drives and clubs. It's almost like the hip starts to swing. It's almost like the hip starts it, not your hand. Leftward miss right now. Just gotta, we've got to eliminate the rightward miss. Control, balance, tempo, but I want to make sure that you feel like you're letting the right hip release on the backswing. Turn the right hip.
hand's going to go in just a little closer to your pocket than they have been. Okay, but let's keep working on just one thing, and that's the right hip turn. Yeah. Right from the hip. Blend it that turn right away. Anything different on the next one. Good. You can almost feel that hip turn from the get go. So you can't turn this too, like sometimes, like I just sort of try to start taking the club back first before I get going with the legs. I shouldn't do that, I should start turning right away. Well, ideally, they're, they are not, uh, they're not taking turns. Okay. Hands your first. Okay, hips. Okay, this. It's all doing their thing incrementally together. So as this starts to turn, this is going to start hinging. This is going to go back. But you want your hands. The, the sweet spot of the club is going to move around. I want your hands to move on a parallel arc. I don't want your hands to go in a straight line and then try to get the jump on the circle later. Let's just get on the circle right from the get-go. Everything's a circle in golf. There are no straight lines here. The thing I know about the one before that one is that your path was to the left of where your face was pointing. That's what I do know. Mm -hmm. And that one, your path was to the right of the face. The face is almost the same with both of those results. But what caused your path to not swing out enough is because it didn't go in enough on the one before. Right. I find it, I find it easier to change the path than the, the face. If I can get the face every time. I agree 100%. Spot, I, agree. I, can, I can consciously get it more that way or more. If we're swinging too, not enough out, we can cause the face to arrive too square. If we're swinging more out, the face has a chance to be the appropriate op openness that impact. So now if that stick is our ending line, when you come in the out ball, trying to have a, a six three path face relationship or five and a five two or four two, a, a two a two path and a one face gives you a really good shot. Mm -hmm. But there really isn't a buffer, a very big buffer here. I mean, you got to be absolutely perfect with that face. That's true. But a five path gives you more buffer. Yeah. You know, you got a, you got some variances. You, I can have my face in more spots that don't get me in trouble. Yeah. So we're trying. I, I do want to create about a five or a six path. Okay. Because that gives us a, a bigger zone to place the face on. So and it just may not draw back enough, or may draw back. It'll draw a little, or draw just right, or draw maybe a little too much. Okay. But uh, it's going to be much easier, and you said it yourself, it's easier to control the path or develop, train a path than it is to train a face. Right. So if we can, it's, I don't want to train the two path because then 
what it, what we agree is un, is hard to control is the bay. You only have a two degree buffer zone. Yeah, I think I might be hitting a lot more of those low hooky things. That's right. Too, yeah. And so let's create that five or six pad. Now we have we have a, a bigger zone for the face to fall into. We can be aggressive without so much fear. And when I do my own practice, should I be trying to develop a left to right and right to left during my practice? I say session? right now, no. Just get just get until trying. you own this. I want you to own this draw right. before you, because that means you can do something else and come back to it and not lose it. Because if I hit a bunch of draws in a row, I'll be like, okay, sweet, and then I'll try to start hitting the fade. With that, I might lose that draw. Um, it's a th let's, you could test it. You could say, man, I really feel like I'm not going to lose this draw. I feel like I could hit a different shot and, and, and then hit the draw again. To test keep that, and if, if you say, well, you know, just that little bit of, just that five minutes of hitting fades, has I've created a little chaos in trying to find the draw again. So maybe it's too soon for me to try to hit the fade. Okay. So I don't mind you experimenting to see if you can do it and come back to it. But if you do it and can't come back to it, or it has, you have to really work hard again to get it back, okay. then I'd rather you play 18 holes and not go after pins that require a fade. Right. So I'm, that's not a birdie hole, that's a par hole. Oh, I, these, I'm, I'm gonna, here's my card, here's the pin places. There's going to be six or seven birdie opportunities on this round of golf. There's so, going to be some I just I'm just not going to go after it. So right now the key right so that you've seen so far is getting that concentrating on that right hip and the hands more inside. Right, and um, I'm seeing a very <laughs> your best shot is as good as I've ever seen it right now. Now we know the pros. You know, I think Roy McIlroy McIlroy has one of the best. I just love it watching his swing. Yeah, he's a, he fires that. I'm in perfect, but uh, and he is, but he also will, he'll block one to the right sometimes, and he'll overhook some sometimes. So the best on the planet. When you're swinging as fast as you're swinging, and your your club head speed is not matching his, but it's not. What are you probably one fifteen? Yeah, yeah somewhere between. He may be one eighteen. Yeah. You know, so he just a little bit faster than you. And so we know the best in the world who hit balls every day. Are still missing fairways. They're still pushing some into the trees. Or right now, we are hitting a lot of fairways with one simple thought. Now, when you hit a bucket of balls and you go practice, I do believe that this little hip drill to the yellow pole set a foundation for the next move, the next piece. I, when I saw you start swinging, I already put it in my mind. I want to do this first for several balls. I'm having to do some full swing, and I'm going to continue to observe the hip. Did that first drill help the hip? No, I need I need to now verbally tell him to move the hip. And so I had a sequence of things I wanted to do. I was hopeful that by the once I introduced the right hip, those two pieces would have worked together. But I needed I needed some absolute sensory control of face, and and not just throwing the hands at it. I wanted to make sure that that you're getting this into the ball right there, and then we're not just dead leg and, and trying to slap it with our hands. That's what, That was one of the reasons or the purpose of the first drill is not to be too handsy. That's my other theory is that I do this uh, to cast it or dump it a lot. Right. What would that, if I'm doing that, will I see, I'm seeing a shot, okay, it's because I'm Yeah, doing because that. you're going to, your, your face control is going to be very chaotic. It's going to be a lot of chaos down there at impact when you try to get handsy. You, all we know right now is that you're hitting good shot without this discussion. Mm -hmm. I just don't want this discussion to, yeah, to be... Just, to, to, just one of those. Yeah. Sure. I want to be careful not to over-teach you. I like what we're doing here with minimalism here. Very nice. Beautiful. I can move that. Mm -hmm. 
that dialog was basically like you, you buy a new software package and in, in the back of the back of the book it had troubleshooting. Right. Okay. <laughs> I just jumped to the back of the book a little bit. I'm hoping nothing goes wrong. You don't have to turn to that section of the book. But here's some troubleshooting things you can do. But right now we don't need to do. That was a beautiful. Time. Awesome. That's best you hit the day, I think. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little thin. That's kind of a miss, but I think it's a place. Good miss. And that's the, see, that's the other issue. When you go straight back, you, you get too steep, and you hit it too fast. And that's why I like the end more because it shallows you out there. So let's keep working on that right hip off the driver twist. <laughs> you know what Grant does? He actually sets his club to face slightly open at my grip. Any club or pretty much every club. And what I have heard in talking with them as they've worked with a lot of pros is that they say that's not uncommon on tour. That they actually do not in terms of the target line. So if, if you look down at that club face and it's slightly open, then just do the same thing. So it just soften the, the curve. It just keeps doing things back. Draw. You have varying degrees, but they're very solid. But you want that height. You don't want that low draw. It's got to be a high draw. That's really small curve. In reality, if, if I say do A, you'll have a softer draw because the geometry will be better at impact. And I haven't told you what A is. It really doesn't make any difference what A is. If A is do something with your foot, do something with your shoulders, whatever A is, I want A to be for the next few swings that you set this club face slightly open to your eye. And everything else is the same. Everything. I want to move the face direction closer to the path direction. The path is a five or a six. I think your face is almost zero. And I need to have it two without changing the path. Now, if doing that is the quickest way to, to get the ball you want, then why wouldn't you do it? Just open the face. We tend to believe that it's not scientific. I'm not really aiming it at something definitive. When I aim at a, if I aim at something, I know it, I know exactly where it is every time. Well, then I want you to say, okay, aim a little, aim some, uh, something a little to the right of it. Aim definitively to the right so you can hit a shot that we did. I want, I want you to become familiar. Also, even when the pros say that they're aiming at that face, at that uh, spot here, based on familiarity, they're, they're they're attempting to aim that. We already know through research, they're way off. What they think they're doing, they're not doing. So, I think it's harder for you to set up that club. Let's say you've got a perfect five or six pad. Man, that, that issue, that box is checked. But this is off. But the way I'm moving my body during the swing is creating the path I want. Now I need, but I want to have a two face at impact. I don't want a zero face. Then I've got to figure out how, how do I start it here but hit it here. It's like I'm consistently getting it back to where I started. Right. And so since I'm doing that I need to change where I started from. That's exactly right. Okay. And, and you don't have to you don't have to change a thought while you're in motion. It's a free swing. Your motion is creating a pretty good path. Let's 
So this for Grands, hit the driver one more time before we wrap this. Only thinking about the right dip with this club. But with if it starts to turn too much, my my fix should be to let that face open up a little bit. If if you think what I'm observing is that it's turning well, first of all, I know it's turning too much because the deviation between pads and face is too big. It needs to be smaller. Now there's two ways to make that smaller. I can make the path move closer to the face and not mess with the face. Or I can move the face closer to the path and not mess with the path. What we're trying is this part, moving the face closer to the path so there's less deviation. Because the fixed rod is just closer to the path. That's right. To, to, to change this to this is more complicated. I, you've got to make movement changes. Okay. And that's harder to do. And why do it if, it, if, all, if I can fix it by just doing this? Right now, we're not hardly seeing anything move right of your start line, and therefore you could you could make your aim point maybe five paces inside the right side. What I do think you do a little bit is that you you have very quick rollover. isn't as stable all the time as I'd like it to be. It's sometimes, it's sometimes closing a little too quick through the hitting zone, as opposed to being controlled. Being, I want you to, long before you arrive at impact, you've almost set it where you want it to be. And, and as opposed to, I'm, I'm going during that little fraction, I'm going to make it happen then. That's when I'm going to have it be perfect. The face will be perfect now. It's perfect right now. It's perfect. It's still perfect. It's perfect. It just you, you, you sometimes get a little handsy every once in a while, and I think that's what causes the, the too much curve because you, that pulls the face away from the path. The path is already set, but then while it's on that good path, that five or six path, you sometimes this alters too too much because you're not stable enough in your hands, not quiet enough. But I think your best ones are when you just happen to be a little quieter with your hands than you are at other swings. So some swings, you just come through just a little too quick. A little too quick. I really like that ball. That was a very stable swing. That one felt like very quiet. Yep, really good. I like that a lot. Like to, I mean, you we, whatever you're doing, I and mean, you, we went from talking about maybe having a little too much curve to hardly having curve at all. Those are beautiful shots. I don't know what you did on those three swings, but you put a blanket on those three balls. PJ. You think some of it is just a little back behind the curtain thought of the hands being a little quieter? Yeah, definitely. 